Honestly, I think uh, it comes from my parents. You know, early on, you know, in my life, they really instilled in me that, you know, just being humble, you know, being appreciative of everything I have, you know, and understanding that, you know, the talent that I do have is God given, you know, and it can be taken away at any moment. So I'm very blessed with, you know, with the talent that I have, you know, with the surrounding people that I have in my life to get me to this point. You also said you're probably the best football player ever to come from Delaware. Mm -hmm. When you hear compliments like that, what goes through your mind? Yeah, no, nah, it's awesome, man. You know, obviously Delaware is a small state, but, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of really good players come out of the state, you know, a lot of really talented players. You know, you just have to do, like, a little bit more uh, digging. So, you know, for, for him to say that, you know, with all the experience that he's had, that means the world to me. Chris, Josh Gaddis told me to ask you about what happened to you the night before the Rose Bowl. Yeah, um, it was actually pretty funny. Uh, I don't know if I ate something weird or, or what happened, but um, I was actually, I got really sick. You know, I was throwing up all night, you know, and then the, uh, leading to the morning of the game, I was still throwing up, you know. I, I, my, I had stomach problems and things of that nature too, like, and all the way up leading to the game, like, I just felt really uneasy. So for me to really have that game, you know, it was, it was kind of surprising to me. Because that game kind of put you in this whole conversation, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Did you ever contemplate not playing? No, not at all. You know, I'm I'm a team first guy, you know, so anything I can do to help my team, you know, whether I'm feeling bad or not, you know, that that's going to be what I do. Chris, can, can you um yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I was I was trying to pound fluids as much as I could before the game. You know, I was drinking all, all types of water and Gatorade, just trying to, you know, maintain the fluids that I was losing, you know, from being from being sick. Chris, what was, what was it like um, working out with Calvin Johnson leading up to the combine? Yeah, no. Nah, how did that come about? It was amazing. You know, as you guys know, Calvin is he's a, he's a great guy. You know, he had a great career. You know, and, and he's just as he, as he um, appears, you know, on TV, he's very calm, you know, collected an individual, but he's very smart about what he does, you know, and um, I actually got in contact with him through my agent, you know, and we really, we set that up and he came down to Pensacola to, to train with me. We did some stuff on the field, but we also did some stuff in the classroom, you know, and it was a, it was a great experience. You know, I've learned, I learned a lot of things from that guy. I was just mainly just trying to pick his brain from everything in the classroom to, you know, training regimens to, to just you know how to get open, how to create separation in the NFL. If not for that bowl game performance, would you have still declared? Um, I, I feel like I would have. You know, I, I think you know I have been contemplating it. You know, leading up to the bowl game, but you know, not one, not one game is really going to make or break you know your decision when it comes to to uh, you know declaring for the NFL. But you know, it definitely was a good note to go out on, and I'm I'm very thankful for the people that played a role in getting me to that point. And getting to know these teams, these coaches. What is it that you hope they walk away? Um, I, mainly just you know, just just knowing who I am as a person. You know, I, you know, just knowing you know, like, like I said, the humble guy that I am, the hard worker that I am. That's one of the main things. You know, I'm I take a lot of pride in my work ethic. You know, so I want them knowing that if they draft me, that, that they're gonna get a, a guy that's gonna come in and work hard every day. How difficult was it to leave Penn State, knowing that you guys won a Big Ten championship and you have you're probably the fate probably the favorite for next year too yeah no nah, it was incredibly difficult it was um arguably one of the more difficult things i had to do in my life you know not only because of, of the potential for next year but you know those are my brothers you know we we've been through so much you know over the past three years you know we fought through so much adversity and you know we had a really successful year but you know above all they're like they're my brothers and, and i'm gonna miss them but i'm i'm not i'm not worried about about their success next year i've all the faith in the world and, and their abilities. What about where do you think you're slotted? I mean, do you think you're, you know, first round, third round? I mean, if, what have you been told about where you think you're slotted in this draft? I mean, that's not really for me to decide. You know, um, I like to control the controllables, you know, and that's me coming in every day, working on, on what I can improve on. And then I feel like at the end of the day, after I do what I can do and control what I can control, everything else will take care of itself. How much did the uh, advisory boards grade on your like, decision to come out? Um, I mean, it, it didn't really, you know, play much of an effect, you know. I, I, I understand they're, they're typically a bit more conservative, but, you know, I, I talked to my coaching staff. I, I talked, you know, I, I got work from a lot of different people, you know, and I really felt like it was the right move for me at this time in my life. What, what do you think? They told you to stay in school. Yes, sir. 